Welcome to the next session in the Sustainability Improvement Planning Series on how to reduce environmental impacts while saving money and improving the workplace, also known as the triple bottom line. Today's video is on where are you today? Writing the baseline audit chapter of your sustainability improvement proposal. We will be using the sustainability improvements proposal template that you can download to create your own plan. In this template, there are two parts to this chapter. By the end of this session, you will be able to develop and implement your plan for conducting a baseline audit to determine how sustainable your organization is today, because you have to know where you are in order to know what needs to be improved and how to analyze the audit data that you collect. You may have done some sustainability audits at work or in sustainability courses. Or if not a formal audit, you may have looked at ways to lower your bills or reduce your impact at work or at home. Think through all of the measurements or audits that you may know or may have used. Or you can search the internet for the type of audit that you want to do. This is just a sampling. In this chapter of the template, there are three main parts. First, you should describe the process that you're going to use, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Lengthy checklists should go in an appendix. Use as many audit checklists or maps that you need in order to get the full picture. For each one, describe the audit, use a chart or table to display the data and results, and discuss the meaning of the results. After gathering the data and looking at the results, you need to analyze the baseline to find the problem areas that can easily be improved to great effect or the areas of greatest need in order to prioritize your search for potential solutions. Again, describe the analysis tool, apply the tool to your problem, and then draw conclusions. Let's take a look at the different types of audits you might use to get your baseline. In this template, we've already talked about how to do a stakeholder analysis, but there are at least three other types of audits that you might consider. A location analysis, a process analysis, and a gap analysis. We'll examine each one, starting with location analysis. This can be useful for many types of sustainability audits, from energy, water, and waste, to transportation, supply chain, and landscaping. Some of the ways you analyze a location is through eco-mapping, physical counts, and behavior observations. See the layout, count what's there, measure what's used, observe behaviors, and document using photos, floor plans, and tables. First, you may want to do a facility walkthrough or walk around if there's not a building involved. If you do a walkthrough, document what you find in an ecomap. The standard marks for ecomaps are hash marks for minor problems or use and circles for major problems or use, with heavier circles for bigger problem areas. You do not have to label the different types of resource use or waste, although you can if it's easy to read, but you'll want to discuss them underneath the map. There are many types of resource use and waste that can be documented with an ecomap, including inputs, like the ones that immediately come to mind, like energy and water, but also ones you might not have considered, like transportation, packaging, and raw materials. Same with output. We normally think of waste, but you can also consider air pollution, noise, odor, and land use. The four-step process is first to draw the floor plan, or you can use an emergency exits plan or a satellite photo for exterior sites. Then document the types of use or waste and estimate the level of use or waste in order to draw the right kind of symbol for the level of use. You can hand draw this as you do your walkthrough, but you may need to create a computer version to have a professional look. After you note the locations of use and waste, 
you need to have an idea of the amount of use or waste for each type of equipment or fixture so that you can estimate the impact of any change that you may want to make. You can create a worksheet to record what you find and use measurement equipment such as a kilowatt, a luggage scale, cup measure, along with the hours per day in order to determine the annual cost. For some audits, you may want to measure a sample of typical use. If you're doing a waste audit, pick a typical day. Or if there's wide variation, such as weekends versus midweek, you may need to take two samples. Make sure you have all the supplies you need, such as those shown here. Take one day's garbage, sort it into natural categories, let the garbage give you the categories, and weigh and record each type. If you do a water audit, there are several ways to measure water use by each fixture or type of equipment, including using cup measures for water flow from faucets, checking specs for the type of equipment, or counting numbers of visits during a sample period of time, and observing typical water use, such as the time that water runs for hand washing or dishwashing. There are also types of check sheets that you can use to track use and waste. Here you just use hash marks to track the numbers of times you observe something. You can even ask people in your workplace to help you, as long as they know that this isn't going to reflect poorly on them. Normally this is done for a sample of time, like three days or a week, once a day or at random times. And there are often useful checklists that you can find online. Some of them cover more than you plan to audit, and you can use a portion of them. If you can, get up to two years of billing data, if there are bills for the resource use or waste that you're analyzing. You can create a chart in Excel, or you can set up an account in Energy Star Portfolio Manager or other tracking software programs like the U.S. Green Building Council's ARC. Both of these are free and provide a method for continuing to monitor use, waste, and improvements. Finally, in a location analysis, you should look for any industry-specific audit tools, some of which are shown here. A number of industries are taking sustainability seriously and have created tailored audits that provide more useful information for your business and add to your business's credibility when you've achieved that particular certification. Another good baseline audit technique is process analysis. Use this when you're trying to make your operations or procedures more sustainable, either on environmental grounds to reduce resource use or errors in producing a product, or social or people grounds, improving the quality of work, quality of life, health, or other social good. As always, there is potential to save money when you do this. Process analysis can be used for finding problems in resource use or waste. You need to flowchart the process, collect the data on the resource use or waste at each step of the process, choose the best charts to show the problem areas, enter the data, and look for places to improve, which could be repeated patterns of mistakes, cycles over time, points in the process that generate the most waste. You can chart your process using a Total Quality Environmental Management or TQEM flowchart, a C Lean or Clean value stream map, or other process map. If you're measuring a process over time, you can use a run chart or control chart or you can show variation in the process using histogram. If you have categorized and measured the waste in your process, you can display it with a Pareto chart. These process improvement systems have a lot of tools that are helpful. TQEM or TQSM, which is Total Quality Sustainability Management, for example, has seven basic tools. If you need to review how to do these, check out some of our videos that cover these. Just a quick bit of advice. When you're flowcharting a process, be sure to use the symbols used in that particular approach. 
because that's what people are familiar with and that's what they'll be expecting. This is not a time to be creative, but a time to show your expertise in the approach to gain credibility as a sustainability professional. For example, use the standard shapes and arrows for TQEM flowcharts. For an environmental focus on lean value stream maps, track the resource inputs to each step, like ingredients, supplies, energy, or water, and outputs, like emissions or waste, for each step in the process. On the bottom, track the amount of a resource, like water, used versus the amount of the resource that is needed. The difference is the waste in the process. The third type of analysis we'll look at is a gap analysis. This is where you take a look at what are the desired goals of the process? What is happening now in terms of quality or performance? And then identify the gaps. These are the potential areas for improvement. This is one way of displaying your analysis of the current status. The left row can be the steps in the process or the characteristics you're looking for in the final product. Green is used if the outcomes from that step or the quality of that characteristic is acceptable. Yellow indicates that it's partially accomplished with marginal outcomes, and red is absent or not acceptable. For example, you can use a gap analysis to identify the shortfalls in a training program by looking at the characteristics you want in a knowledgeable employee or customer or student, the training that is currently available, and an analysis of whether the content is covered adequately. For areas not covered or covered partially, you can identify the missing knowledge or skills that need to be covered. One final idea for collecting data on processes or gaps is to use a survey with your stakeholder's support. You can survey employees or customers or students on where they see problems with the process or whether they are satisfied with the outcomes. Harvard has a really good tip sheet on how to write survey questions, and there are a lot of free survey tools you can find on the internet. I use Google Forms, but whichever one you use, be sure to use one that allows you to download data. Not all of them do that. This is important because the default charts that many free surveys have do not allow you to present the information in better ways for your stakeholders. The second part of the baseline audit chapter is the analysis of the data you collected in the first part. There are a number of ways you can do that. Some with the TQEM tools we mentioned before. Some with additional tools. We'll briefly discuss each of these. After collecting the numbers, whether kilowatt hours, gallons, pounds of waste, tons of greenhouse gases, miles traveled, or other data collected, you have to select the best way to display the data to give the best information at a glance. Pie charts can be good for some demographic data. Bar charts can be more informative for showing highs, lows, and changes. Other informative analysis might include the mean or average, the range between highs and lows, the variation. Here's a hint, use the standard deviation. The direction and shape of the data, called skewness and kurtosis, can show trends over time or the results of changes. And you may be happy with any improvement, but check the size of the change to see if it's a meaningful difference or if it's in the noise level. As you analyze the baseline, you want to identify the largest problems to tackle and perhaps the easiest problems, that is, the low-hanging fruit. You can do this using a Pareto chart or prioritization matrix. This will help you focus your research on the right best practices and products that will make the quickest or greatest difference. Other TQEM tools that can be helpful are the Ishikawa cause and effect or fishbone diagrams and scatter diagrams. Fishbone diagrams help you brainstorm potential causes for
for a particular negative effect. Note that the variables on the spines, called 4MPE, which is methods, materials, machines, measures, people, and environment, is very common and useful. And scatter diagrams allow you to compare two variables to see if there's a correlation between them. Remember, correlation is not causation, but it can still be useful. If you want to see how much variation there is in the data, and what patterns or cycles are happening, you can use a run chart or control chart. A run chart will help you see changes, patterns, or cycles, whether over the course of a year or year over year. If you see a lot of variation, a control chart can help you see if your resource use or process is in control or changing significantly by using the standard deviation. You might also be asking what stakeholders think is important or a problem, whether in an interview, a focus group, or a survey. You can use qualitative analysis techniques like content analysis or grounded theory to find patterns in what they say. If you happen to do both, see what shows up in both. That could be a significant focus for further research. Finally, you might want to look at the entire system using the fifth discipline archetypes or flowcharts to look at the butterfly effects that can have monumental effects down the line. These are fascinating to explore. There's a series of Excel workshops available to you that cover most of these analysis tools. Be sure to review the ones you need. The next step after the audit is to look for best practices that have been tried successfully elsewhere. In the next chapter, you will take the problem areas that you've identified in the baseline audit, that is, what you're going to benchmark, which means studying the best of the best and tackling your problem area. Do that by researching best practices, learning from case studies, and applying those ideas to your organization. Now it's your turn. Draft your baseline audit. Determine which audit tools you're going to use. Conduct the audit. Collect the data. Analyze the data. And create a display of the results. And as always, have fun with it. See you next session.